Hello everybody, and we are here once again with Auto Challenge, but this time we bring you Season 3, the beginning. Which obviously you will see me win for the first time in a regular challenge. As the Blade of Summer tries to keep going and defend his two championships in a row. And we begin this time with two awesome cars. As you will see, it's a scroll down the page. Hold on. Obviously this is our new way of doing it. Seen introduced last time. Hold on. Okay, here we go. We got the Porsche 918 Spider and the Kunenzeg Agaro 1. And I don't know why that's not up there like it should be. Okay. But we have the Porsche 918 on the left and the Kunenzeg Agaro R. And notice that I said 1 because that's what we talked about last week on here. If you remember at the end of last season, at the beginning before we did our challenge with the Hennessy Venom GT and the McLaren P1, we talked about the Kunenzeg Agera 1-1 in the beginning, and I talked about that. You know, the Blader Summer is talking about the Kunenzeg Agera 1, which R. If I say 1, I mean R. What comes from the 1-1, one, one, which at that time it didn't mean 1. Okay, and here we go. But like all the other times, we always talk about a car at the beginning, and this time the Blader Summer is going to begin with a car that I agree is cool. Which is unusual because you don't like Jeeps. But this is the new Fiat inspired Jeep. Jeep's getting a little bit of that Italian flared into the, uh, the Jeep. And if you haven't seen the Jeep Cherokees, right, you see the noticeable difference. The, uh, the back ends are very much like the uh, Fiat 500. Well, the, well I, I like a lot of the other SU, uh, SUVs. So here's the, the front of it. But this is but this is the new or the new one here, and it's supposed to be, kind of be a, you know uh, in that small SUV market, which is dominated by the Forester, by Subaru, and the other SUVs like the uh, the Rav4 and the uh, the the, the uh, Honda one there. They have uh, and they also have for Fiat's bigger car, which this one here sort of with is the Fiat 500L. This is supposed to be in that market, and it's supposed to be pretty quick and, and snappy. It's supposed to be, they kind of put it along time with the, with Nissan's Juke, kind of. The no, market's going to be aiming terrible. for the younger set. Um, the Juke is the worst car ever but made. But the thing is designed for it is typically for younger people and usually divorced 55-year-olds who are trying to look back like they're young. And um, <laughs> it has that kind of a thing. But these here, they're going to be basically for the younger, kind of get out there, you want, and it has the capabilities. It's going to be sporty, so it's going to kind of maybe attract some of the people who are into, you know, like the Foresters and whatnot. However, it's going to be awful hard to beat, the, you know, the reliability and the history of the, uh, the Forester. Uh, <clears throat> but it's going to be a nice small SUV. It'll have a little niche, pretty darn good car. Uh, it's got a nice look about it. And it's got, uh, but if you do notice, it is the same type of rims and the same color as Subaru's Crosstrek when it came out. Ooh, that thing is awesome. So they're trying to uh, do a little bit of copying there and again trying to snag some of that market. Um, but again, not a bad little car. It's got a nice wide track to go and do a little bit of off-roading. A lot of new modern European kind of design features. So all in all, not a bad little car. Um, and again, it's got a lot of little snazzy things there, you know, the nine speeds and the transmission, and it will come in either a, uh, a, a turbo, a 1.8 turbo, or a 2.4, just regular uh, non-turbo, and it's going to carry a the, the Trailhawk, which is going to be a little more rugged for off the road, start getting into some of the features you would get with a Forester, it's going to have that 8.7 inch ground clearance. So it gets a little bit, uh, it'll be a little bit better off the road. So and it's going to have, and it's, it's going to have a nice little sound system in it, so you can tell that they are trying to impress the younger set. All in all, not a bad little vehicle, and they'll have prices and things coming out at some point. Right, because they just released this at the Geneva Motor Show, which is in Switzerland. And we're just going to give you one last little look at it before we go on to the next. And there it is at the front, which looks really cool. 
And I don't usually like Jeeps, but I think this one here looks pretty cool. Right. Now, lots of times we always talk about here what countries these cars that we talk about are from. And obviously I haven't showed you a map. So we will show you a map and then tell you which sort of cars are from where that we are going to talk about this week. So now that I have a picture, because I have planned on showing you where these cars are from on this map, which is here. Right. Here's the thing. We're talking about a cake drum coming up next, which is obviously from England. So we're just talking about where the different cars are from. So obviously the cars are from England, which we're talking about the cake drum, and then you talked about the Jeep, which is made by Fiat, which is in Italy. And then we have, what else do we have? Um, oh yeah, the Kuhnenzeig, which is from Sweden. Mm -hmm. So that's right there. So it's from Are you sure? Yeah. I checked it before I put it up. <laughs> and then we got the Porsche, which is from Germany. Which is there. And then the Geneva Motor Show, which we've been talking about last week and this week, because obviously it's something that just happened, is in Switzerland, and that is Switzerland. So that's where a lot of the cars we're talking about this week, except for the Jeep, which is from America, but it's built by Fiat, because they own it. So, there is the places that they are from. Right, so now enough showing you a map of Europe. Instead, first, on here, we also don't talk a lot about different car related apps because obviously most car related apps are boring but I seen this came out today which was exciting and as a top gear um, app that they have that you can race the Stig and you gotta sort of like jump around things but they do include a lot of things from the show so it's pretty interesting if you like that they have a few different cars they made that you can buy or download so that's coming up but now this. I forgot to get information on, so. Okay, this here is a Catrum. And, um. It's pretty cool. On. Okay, here it is. This one here is called the Catrum Aero 7. Um, and now Catrum isn't really known for making cars that look like cars of now or the futuristic design. Like you get from Lamborghini or Ferrari or Porsche or anything like that. But that one there is a pretty cool design. Uh, now what it is, it should come out in about 2016. Uh, so like I said, this here is a concept. Uh, just like the legacy concept, which you're going to see come out at the end of this year. The concepts obviously, sometimes they look a lot alike, or sometimes they change a lot. The Stingray concept was a lot of change. The Aero 7 concept, I believe, is not going to change <clears throat> that much along with the legacy concept which also didn't change that much um so they have a lot more stuff with it but as you notice it doesn't have windscreen because cars don't technically have to have windscreen it doesn't have windscreen so that's that's part of a problem with it because if you're going on the road you're going to get hit in the face with bugs because your face is the windscreen basically goggles on we're not just going to go down the road with goggles on. That's how they used to do it when they didn't have windshields. Um, anyways. <laughs> and Dale Earnhardt wore, wore goggles, so you're going to say Dale Earnhardt. Oh my god. Uh, you got pick, so you're picking on Dale Earnhardt. No. I never said that. So yeah, there you go. So you're picking Stop. On. Stop. Nice job. NASCAR fans are going to just like Everything that I say somehow affects something else that you're going to mention. Uh-huh. I'm just saying that... So this is a car for Dale Earnhardt, not for Dale Earnhardt haters. Anyways, this car here 
is more actually meant for track day racing. Now, obviously, you could drive it as a regular car, go to work, but it's not so meant for that. Where for track days, basically, you go up to a track and let you race around it. Oh, there's many other cars for it: the BAC Mono, the um, Ariel Atom, and actually the Subaru BRZ, along with the Scion FRS and the Toyota GT86, which is all the same car, just different logo on the front. All are also good for the track day event. Now that there's a pretty cool car. Now at the same time, Keytrim has released another car. And this one here is what their current car looks like. Give us a second to load, obviously. It's a bit different. Uh, now what Keytrim has with this one here is some include windscreens and some don't, and that's part of the thing about it. Um, and this one here is made in England, where the uh, this is for K-Trim is from. Like I showed you on the map. Right. So is everybody now ready to begin the main challenge? Mm -hmm. Right, we have the Porsche 918 Spider, which is an amazing car. And it's going to win. It's actually a hybrid, like we talked about last week. And the Kuna is like a Gera 1, which isn't either one of those. I mean, it's amazing, but it's not a hybrid. And we didn't talk about it last week. Actually, we did. Mm -hmm. And it's time for the Blader Summer to tell about his car that he's picked. All right. Big thing. Now, just just taking a quick look at that, your, your Porsche there. What, how many horsepower does that have? Didn't get to finding that yet because you wanted to go right away. Okay. Well, I'll tell just, you. Just, just you know it. that the um, Conan Seg has got 1,115 horsepower, making it the most powerful car on earth. Is it? That's the most powerful car, most horsepower? Unless something has just come just recently that, that exceeded that. But it's certainly not the Porsche 918. Nope, it isn't the Porsche 918. So, so as far as horsepower goes, eh, the, the winning winner goes to Conan Seg. Oh man, that's crazy. Okay. The, uh, the Gera as is coming out of, even from, you know, the, uh, from Auto Trend magazine uh, is actually putting it that the, the only real competition for the Konseg Agera is going to be the Bugatti Veyron and possibly the Bugatti Huayra. So it's just like they're considering it the, one of the top three cars in the world. So this is from the experts making this car. Actually, well, you know, now top. listen, listen, listen. Listen here. It's the sixth range for horsepower. What? The 19? The Agera. There's a Lotus, the Bugatti Veyron, yeah. and the Hennessy Venom. Okay. And the SSC Ultimate Era, which has 1,287 horsepower. Which was the fastest car in the world in 2008. And then we had the Hennessy Venom, which is the fastest car in the world now. And then the Bugatti Veyron Grand Sport, Vitesse, and Super Sport, which will have 1,200. The Lot... It's not a Lotus. It's a Lot... It's a Lotic Sirius, which I don't know what that is. It's got 1,200. And then the Kunizaga Gera. Yep. Is on there. Okay, then where's your car? This page here is actually a little bit outdated. It came out 2011. Okay, so you're... Yeah, 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 so you're the, the, no, actually page? it's from 2013 because it has the Venom. But they, uh, where is it? Yeah, it came out about a year ago. Okay. I will find out how much horsepower that has.
Okay, why don't you tell some stuff? Okay. Yeah, the Porsche 918 has 608 horsepower. Hmm? It has 608 horsepower. Oh, okay. Only? Yeah. Okay, so it's kind of pretty pretty lame when you come to think of it. Mm. Yeah, very lame. In, in comparison in comparison to the Conan Sag, okay? Um, so, what happens is you got, you know, that's okay. And what's, now what's this top speed? No, this is, um, shifty thingy. Well, why don't you tell some stuff while I look it up? Okay, well that's just the thing. So you can take a look at that. So it, it's got this one here, okay. Actually, it has 608 horsepower, plus it's electric motors, which adds in 279 more. Oh, so still on only eight. So we're still we're still. Three. Oh, oh man, that is so but less it's horsepower. Still, but it's still three hundred, three hundred horsepower. Wow. Most fast cars out there have less than three hundred horsepower. So that's quite a huge difference. Okay, so <clears throat> to go in there and, and you know with our actually the the, the two thousand thirteen's got one thousand one hundred one hundred and forty horsepower, with a top speed of. Get this top speed of two hundred and seventy-three. No, you're talking about the one one. Not this one here. No, you're talking about the one one. The one the one. Koenigsegg Agera R. Okay, because the one one. I'm sorry, but this is what this is what it is. Listen to me. The one one is basically an Agera with more horsepower. Well, you have the. What happens is it comes out. There's, there is the one that runs on ethanol. Is a version of the R that comes out with ethanol. We're going to show your favorite car to everybody. So, with the ethanol, if you're going to get the 1140, yep, the, the Reliant Robin. And then they do have the gas version. Even the gas version, on just regular gasoline, has got 960 horsepower. So, so if you use regular gas in your car, that means that the Porsche has 100 less. Right, but if you use so, but if you go with the more, the more energy, you know, conserving ethanol, then you'll or get you can just go with a more energy conserving car, and use the but Porsche if you're gonna 918. Go in and spend that kind of money. Why not just get the faster one, the one with the more horsepower? Why do you get the one that looks cool? And then the thing, well, actually, if you take a look at it, the Koenigsegg, I think, is probably one of the more, the, probably the most attractive of the supercars. No, that, that cool door that goes up on the side like that, that's pretty awesome. You know, you can imagine taking your girlfriend out and open the door like that. and come, She can easily get in and out of the car. Oh, and she's going to you think you're so cool for being that gentleman and letting her in and out of the car ever so nicely. Okay. And it is, since it is, and then you can tell your girlfriend, oh, I have the most, I have probably the fast, one of the fastest cars. And, and it comes from Sweden. And it's like, you like going to Ikea, don't you? Yes. So, so you're saying, so with uh, that Ikea, this is a thing. Now, you I, cannot this compare this, 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 a store just, that sells just, just, small can European can furniture and meatballs to can I just listen? a car with listen doors that look like a robot's listen arm. Listen to me, listen to me, okay? Now, now, the product out of Sweden, okay, it comes out of, is Ikea. Now, the product out of Germany, now Germany owns Stop and Shop. Now, where would you rather go? Ikea, we're stopping shop. We're not comparing stores, we're comparing cars. No, I'm just Stop saying. and shop is from Germany? Yeah. Okay. I'd rather go to Target. But, anyway. <laughs> Where's Target from? Target's from America. Exactly. Uh, from Minneapolis. Look at that. Mm -hmm. Look at those doors. Those doors go up in a more better way. Those look, those look more of a gold way. So you can, look, you can actually come down and you can pinch your fingers and it'd be really bad. I will show you how the doors look in your car. They look like... And it was, and, and, and it do the robot dance. That's what your car looks, looks like. Armpits. Those are like. Okay. They're and opening. It, okay. Like that, and not like. Okay. Which is kind of funny. You got a German car with the French sneaker brand on the side. Okay. <clears throat> um. That's. Ugh, you're annoying. So anyway, 
So you're going to compare the product of you're going to compare the product out of Sweden better than the product out of Germany. If you like IKEA, or you're going to like Stop and Shop, which better? I'll take IKEA. There you go. But, so you're saying, so you're saying but no, for you're cars, saying no. The Swedish, the Swedish, you, you, your your preference is the Swedish. So the Swedish, they don't even sell the same thing. One sells furniture, you, and can, one. Can you can you can you buy food at IKEA? Yes, but can you buy can furniture you, at Stop and Shop? Think about the center in the middle. That is summer <laughs> garden furniture. You're not going to be like, oh, I'd like to buy this small plastic garden table. I'm going to yeah, put it in buy, my living you, room. But you can buy, you know, kitchen gadgets. Yeah, you're not going to buy a couch. Can you, can you buy kitchen gadgets? Can you buy a couch at Stop and Shop? Sometimes. Can you just walk in and be like, I like this couch from Europe. I think I'm going to put this in my house. But you can buy... Wait, Germany's from Europe too. Never mind. Um... But they have, it's more American. Yeah. Stop and Shop is more American than... No, no, this because it's an American. It's, it's, the store is in America, but Stop and Shop is the German. But they have American things. So I, I, Ikea is just selling it in America. This stuff is like, how do you know that's where it's all coming from? Isn't it? also, it's like, it all comes from China. It's, no, it doesn't. Yes, it does. That's where they make it. No. Anyway. <laughs> Look at that car, though. But that, you know, I mean, that's not a bad looking car. Oh, it's part of the Kunenzeg. But you look at the Kunenzeg, it's like, yeah, I think the Kunenzeg. It's, that's all kind of all these different shapes, and it gets so busy. It's just busy, busy, busy. That is busy. ugly. That's busy, doors busy. are like, yeah, this is a. It comes with a roof box. Okay. Thule. Is there anything, would, would you would you mind having to, you know, you can put stuff in there? I don't want a roof box on my supercar. But what happened? Then you then you could like put stuff in it. Oh look at me! I got my Lamborghini. Oh, I got a roof box on it. You don't hear like rappers singing about like I got my Gallardo with my roof box. How about that? I got my roof box. I got my roof box. I got my handy in my roof box. You know, then you can get in. That's awesome. It's got it going on. It's got it going. Rappers on. aren't gonna rap about having roof boxes on a Gallardo, yeah. and they're not gonna rap about it because they don't have one. Had they had one, they would rap about it because they probably, you know, put, you know, their Hennessy or their weed or, <laughs> you know, their AK-47 or whatever else they might have. And they'll put it in their roof box. And so once, you know, once you get a rapper, you know, a little Wayne or somebody. Yeah, yeah he's definitely going to sing about, he's going to, he'll have his hit song, Roof Box. Hmm. What do you think about that? Having a, a song called Roof Box? That's good, good, you know. Uh, a good name for that. You know, a good name for a song. A good name for a band. Roofbox 20. You know, or maybe, uh... 273 mile an hour roofbox. But see how, look at, look at that. It, that. it just looks so neat, so clean. It even, it even has that kind of, that, that Lamborghini kind of look. It now, does. what's your favorite car? McLaren P1. And that, that actually, it does an awful look like a McLaren 2, doesn't it? Isn't that no. That? It has that kind of that kind of a look, so it's kind of in that vein, rather than that busy sort of all lumpy looking, you know, Porsche. The Porsche Nine Eighteen is one of my look favorite. Look how clean those lines are. I don't want that car. I'd rather have the. No, look at that. It's, it's, and, and they got the wing in the back. This car is smooth. It's slick. It's clean. It's fast. The horsepower. So you have the bragging rights. You know, it has that. You know, Where are you going to you know, use that horsepower? Well, I think anything over 200, you're probably not going to use, it's going to be more than you need anywhere, but... Exactly! So, for once, we see you don't need all the power to win. But... No. But you have no, your bragging rights. No. If, you, if you're buying a supercar, you're, you're buying a supercar for bragging rights. No, you're right? just, you can buy you're just it because buying you're making, saying, you oh, are I'm making rich, a statement. Me. You are making a statement with a supercar. That's why yeah, all those ones over there in Dubai and all them United Arab Emirates are going to have all them big supercars because they're making a statement. And that statement is just excess. And so the value of excess, more horsepower, more speed. Okay? Excess. And there's this just in a nice wrapped up package from, from Sweden. And, you know, I, I think at this one here, I think, again... You yeah. lost because the car is, is fast. I'm even gonna tell about my car powerful. yet. Hold on, you can't, you can't beat it. You can't beat it. Your car is not as fast. 
It doesn't look as nice. There's less horsepower. You know. Oh no! So, what am I gonna do? I'm facing the person that says that a Nissan Cube is better than a Ferrari. Well, I was the one that can. I, I was the one that debated it over over you, over your Porsche, whatever the heck you went against it with it. I just said a Ferrari. Ferrari, I mean. So, so it's just a matter of just that could just prove my point, like just like I did this time. I never faster, more powerful supercar. You know, from Sweden. No. So you didn't win. I think I won. Enough set. More power. Faster. I think it's a better looking car. I didn't even tell about my car longer. yet. It doesn't matter. It does. It's just a waste of breath. You're a waste of breath. Okay, now it's my turn to tell about this That's car. not a very nice thing to say. You're not very nice. Okay. Now, this car is obviously better. Look at that. It's convertible, so you can go on the road. You can have all the air in your hair flying. Bugs down flying in your face. Bugs flying in your face. No all place to the, put all anything, the, so you can't take anybody, and you can't take it on vacation. You can go down the road in Italy in the winding corners in your car. That's German. Why would you do that? Why would you? Because you? Germans like Italians. They're friends. Um, so they can drive through the windy roads, and you can go see some stuff in Italy. Well, well last time the Germans in Italy got together, they had World War Two. So you really want to get this together? You want to, you want to get the axis started all over again? Oh my gosh. I never said that. I said that they're friends. Yeah, well, they, last time they had, they ended up being friends. Mussolini, Hitler. You're talking World War II, persecution of the Jews. You're right there, dude. <laughs> that is not. You know, genocide. Holy cow! What's what are you talking the about? The Porsche 918 Spider is not World no, War II. But, but but you're putting their friends together. It, it's scary. You know, I'd be afraid. You know, in Sweden, they tend to be kind of like not, they don't team up with anybody. I mean, they they helped out the good side when they were a little bit in World War II, but this is part of the axis. You're going into World War II. All these people died. London, your favorite city being bombed. What the uh, heck? How terrible is that? You're supporting that. Witness. I'm not supporting that. Oh, my goodness. And they just went out there, and then they're just, just born out of just, you know, little cars for the German soldiers to get around. They and had attack. Volkswagen Beetles. And they went there and, and they killed people. They did not have a Porsche 918 Spider Hybrid. They weren't going on their... They didn't have them yet. Exactly. They all use Beetles. If I said, let's go drive a Beetle in Italy... But the technology they've gotten and, and of all that science and all that stuff, man, it's just from World War II. Oh, yeah, definitely. That, that's, that's just trying to just overtake the world. It's like, it's just... That's definitely how they got it. Yeah. Brilliant. No, that's not how that happened. I don't know. I, I think I really think you're going down a pretty bumpy road on that one. And and and, and these kind of cars don't, don't go down bumpy roads very well. They bottom out. They get flat tires. It's not a good thing. I really I really believe that you're really just made a bad choice here on cars. That car is cool. Look at his wheels. You know, it's like yeah. You know, it's like that car is cool. It, you could it drive looks, that. It looks, like, it looks like the Panzers that went across. You know. France and Belgium and just killing people in World War Two. Is that going to be a reference? Because I said that they... <sighs> then we can drive it in Canada. Canada had no involvement. Yeah, they helped. They actually they helped our side. They we can drive Canadian, it in Brazil. Canadian troops. We can drive it in Brazil. Oh yeah, that's where actually, actually you ever see the movie Boys from Brazil, which actually which is actually the people that came from Hitler who they escaped before they got arrested. They all went to they all went to Brazil. China. So there's lots of China. Russia. Oh, Great Russia destroying Ukraine. Oh my god. Oh my goodness. <sighs> Chernobyl. Oh my god. Is it there? And it's just like and all the poverty. Japan. Japan. You know, it's like. It's a German car. <laughs> the Japanese were part of the Axis with the Germans attacking America. I knew they, you were They that. bombed Pearl Harbor. Drive it in America then. Hmm? Drive it in America. Drive it in America. Drive that in America. Drive the Porsche 918 Spider in America. We're going to bring German things to America, like Stop and Shop. We're going to bring Swedish things to America, like Ikea. Drive it in Mexico. Mexico had no oh, involvement. Oh, with the drug cartels, fast cars, get from the cops. Now you're going to have them about England, too. Hmm. And what? they got bombed by Germany. What Can't country? London. What country could I not say that had involvement with that? You know. Romania. Yeah, they were, they were part of the... Part of the oh, yeah. They uh, also fought gypsies. 
<laughs> so I, I think really, you know, it's just the Germany. Whole thing. You can of it. you can drive it in Germany. You know, but things from Germany, you know, it's just like you know, bad, Denmark, bad grocery stores, and well, they they kind of got they were part of the they were fought against, fought against Germany. So they got over, you know, they got attacked and they just killed everybody. And it was bad, 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 bad. What are the European country gonna say? You know, you, you, I have a walk. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, South Korea. You could drive it in South Korea. They had nothing to do with it, did they? They were just chilling there. Yeah, they all had their own issues. They were getting ready to be taken over with the communists and stuff like that from Russia. Well, that was the North Koreans' fault. Drive it in South Korea and you're good. No, but they was attacked by the Russians and... North Koreans. Um, India. India. Yeah. Boom, you can drive it in India. We found the perfect car for anybody that lives in India. So if you're watching this video... Oh, great. India is probably one of the poorest countries in the world. So how are you just going to slap them poor Indians in the face when they live in huts? And they walk and ride bicycles, and you come around. They with own things. Jaguar. You know, well, Jaguar is owned owner. by an Indian country company. A company. Is company. It, is, there is a you know Mumbai has got some you know there's some companies in there. Exactly. But if, you, but if you're gonna drive around and go through all these cities with the, the impoverished people of India with this real nice car polluting their air, which is already bad, and you can drive this really this fancy car around, oh. and you can make them feel bad that they're poor. You can drive it. In that United, whatever you call them, Arab Emirates or whatever. Great. That's where they drive Bugattis, Kunzeg, and Lamborghini. They have a Lamborghini police car. And, and, and those places hate America. They hate. But this car is from Germany. But they hate America. So you're going to support a country and a, and, and a company that hates America. What's the country in the Middle East that likes America? Nobody. The one that they're friends with, that they made themselves, and they're like, yo, we're making this country. That little one there. That little country. Oh, Kuwait? No, not them. They're, they're not the ones. It's the other ones that they're like... That they keep. The ones that you said that they're friends with. Oh, Israel? Yeah. You could have in Israel. They're friends. Oh yeah, great! You're gonna have the, the you're gonna have the Germans and then the Israel is all for, for the Jews and the Germans who went there and the genocide and the Jews. Oh, great! Thank you for bringing in and supporting. I mean, and, and they're probably the people that were strongly involved in killing lots and lots of Jews, and in that country, in that company. So they're gonna be not too excited. Let's see, where else <laughs> could you drive that you're not gonna say something about? Spain, Spain. They were they were part of you know the the on the American side. They fought against because they because the they were all together. They were all fighting each other. That's why it's called a world war. There's not a country you can go to, and they're either going to be like, "Yay, we like German cars." And well, actually, they were fighting against when they were actually there. The Germans were going across North Africa, which at the time was really run by Spain, and so there was lots of fighting and everything like that. South Africa. South Africa. You can drive in South Africa. What about South Africa? You can drive it in South Africa. They were not and involved. They had apartheid and they were persecuting the blacks and whatnot. So you're going to go through there and support, <laughs> you know, that kind of type of thing. So you're, you know, you're, you're, you're kind of like that. And supporting that Nazi thing that went on oh. in Germany. So you're kind of just going in there, genocide. And it's a car from Germany. It doesn't have anything to do with them fighting. They were, they were behind a lot of that the stuff in World War II. So, there you go. You're you just can't drive it in France. You can't drive it in Japan. China? Mm. Mongolia. Mongolia. There you go. That's near Russia. Right? Yes. Yeah, you yeah, can. What about... Kazakhstan or whatever it's called. Or Kazakhstan? Yeah, what about them? Yeah, it's, 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 it's part of Russia. Well, it was part of the Soviet Union. So, let's put it this way. So, every country basically 
that I mentioned was either helping Germany, helping America, or part of the Soviet Union. Or they, or they kind of like abused somebody, some, some, you know, so they were mean to people. Greenland. Greenland. They had nothing to do with anything. They were just there, living in ice. Mm -hmm. Do people even live in Greenland? Hmm? Do people live in Greenland? People live in Greenland. You could drive that car in Greenland. I win. I finally thought of a country that doesn't involve any of those things. But they have just one, one road that goes around the circle of it. Exactly. You can drive in a circle. You can drive over Lion Robin in a circle. No, see, that's where you're wrong. Because, like I showed earlier, if you drive over Lion Robin in a corner or anywhere that involves turning, that happens. So you cannot drive a Reliant Rabbit in a circle. <sighs> I got an idea. So, anyway. In conclusion, because I have to get out of here. Hold on, hold on. You gotta see something. The Corning Tag wins because it's more power much faster, you had a neutral nation that went on out and produced the, the most powerful and fastest car just for a little while and they're not right that among the best and their products are great they do well in the, in the Winter Olympics and you know with that, with enough said No, actually That's the winner, the Koenigsegg's ah, the winner No, wait, wait, season, wait, get, wait Episode look 1, look Season it, 3, we're look on it, a roll Look it, look it, all the, that go, I look won. it Look at this picture that I'm about to show everybody that happens if you have a Koenigsegg. It catches on fire and crashes. I think they all do if you wreck, if you go too fast and you drive it poorly. No, that's, that's only for a Koenigsegg specifically. It's the right hand of the computer. I win. Because the car had an accident? Yes. Someone had an accident with it? Yes. That's driver error. That's driver error. Someone just pushed it too far. Wow. But the thing is, you can well, think, but they survived a big crash. They how they, do you know? Look at this smashed windscreen on the side they're driving. So that's probably a tree came through it, and they were like, "But see, this, it, it didn't. It, it's not all crumpled up because then, it's made person, of carbon fiber. And what is carbon fiber super good at? Not getting damaged." Oh, isn't that a wonderful thing to say good about the car? Thank but you so it. much! It's got Every it's of, car of, that's made of carbon fiber has but, the same but thing. But this is made of carbon and, fiber oh, and Kevlar. Ooh! ooh and ooh, Kevlar. No, listen. It's made of leather. No, Kevlar. That's leather. No, Kevlar is what they use In for leather. bulletproof vests, which we use on our soldiers. So the same thing that helped protect our soldiers from terrorists and being shot protects the car. So wouldn't you want to protect our soldiers? Don't you want to make sure our soldiers are safe? Yeah. So it makes... So the same kind of thing that the Swedes put in no, to watch, that car, hold on. so that, that their drivers are safe. So they care. Now Did we're going to see if there's any crash before you're trying to The Germans try to shoot our soldiers, but the, the Swedes try to save our soldiers. Don't you want to save our troops? Yes. Don't you support our troops? Yes. Alright, support Kevlar. Oh, look it. There's no picture except for that one of a damaged Porsche 918 Spider, And that means that I win because Google has no images of a crashed one, and crashing is bad, and I win. Is it crashing? Yes. This car is a hybrid, too. That one's bad. It's usually what happens when, when they crash, they disintegrate, so there's nothing left Why? to take a picture of. Why? Because it's just here, they survive. Why does it disintegrate? Because it just... it's, it's a hybrid, though. And hybrids, as we know from previous episodes, last one, is good for the environment, they're batteries. But these help save your life, so... There you go. I win. But Boom. you're not going to die if you're driving a battery-powered car. You're not going to die if you drive a Prius. You're going to go fast enough. Uh, <laughs> I win. <laughs> you're funny. Yeah, you lose. Hello, everybody, and welcome here to... What is the giving of the award? But instead of 
put in the award on the wall. We still need to print out a new one because of the way this one looks. Because we ran out of toner in the printer, and that's the last one that it would take because we ran out of color toner. So we need to get more. So later we'll hang it up. So instead of showing you putting it on the wall, we're gonna show you how the awards have changed. So this is episode one of season one, the first one he ever did. Now I will tell you that we hadn't made the awards until about episode three. I said that we should put an award on the wall every time. But, if you see, this one here is the first one that we obviously printed out. And it's in red. Each color represents a different season. So we got season 1's red, season 2 is green, season 3 is blue. Now if you see here, the numbers always stay in the same spot. So it's been the same text. But before it said the Blader of Summer. The for episode 1 of season 1 to episode 1 of season 2. Because you see... Up here we have the rest of season two because we're changing them like that. So there you go. That was high, but the next episode right there, you can see that we got rid of the. So up until then. So that's one thing that's new. That season three is that all of them aren't going to feature that. It's off to the side. We didn't align it, but that one there is bigger and aligned to the center. And this one. Actually, we're featuring the car name on it now. So this one here doesn't say it. This one here will be the first one to feature the car name. And the Kunizig Agera R.